How's it going, YouTube? So it's what? Saturday, my day off. I don't have to go to my day job today. And um, this is a picture that I'm drawn here of my favorite D&D character I have ever played in any campaign. It was a lizard man mage. It was my friend Lee was running this when he was living in, uh, staying, staying at his mom's house in Everett because he was kind of in between apartments at the time. It's pretty rare for Lee. He's always had his own place. I think this was only like the space of a month or something like that. Anyways, the reason why I started drawing this is because I was getting kind of nostalgic for the days when I used to get up and game on Saturdays with all my friends. Steve and Dennis and Joe. Pike would sometimes come. Uh, Lee would sometimes come. Rarely. Jill. Jenny. I think that was pretty much most of the people that would play. And this became an obsession with us. Just loved gaming. We'd play everything. D&D, &D mostly. But, uh... Play Palladium, Ninjas and Super Spies, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Robotech, After the Bomb. Um, we play strategy type type games like uh, Battletech. I guess I don't know that's strategy. I guess it's strategy. Uh, Starfleet Battles. It was a lot of fun. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And. Uh, <coughs> Man, I'm starting to get sick or something. Anyways, uh, just thinking about how back, back in the day, it was just obsessive. Everyone would have their own, you know, your own gaming dice. No one was allowed to use anyone else's stuff and get a, a gang of microwave pizzas. And then my friends would eat them all. Someone would have to, <laughs> would have to bring soda pop, and everyone else would pitch in so we'd get extra Cheetos. Cheetos, Pepsi, sometimes Mountain Dew. It was, uh, it was good times. I don't really do that anymore, you know. Go and play role-playing games. Uh, last time I played a role-playing game was like on the death of Gary Gygax. We got together and, and played some uh, Dungeons and Dragons with a different group of friends. And... It was hard to get back into. Just even for that one game. Because as I look at it now, even though this has spawned a ton of my creativity, I wouldn't trade that for anything. Now it just seems like there are so many other things I want to do, like draw or paint or write. Um, I just don't, I don't have time to game anymore. And I kind of miss it. I mean, you know, look at this. Here's a, a character I made up when I was gaming, and now I'm redrawing him for a video. So I guess that kind of goes into, like, your uh, creative bank account to draw on later uh, for other projects. And I ended up doing that quite a bit. Like, I just started painting my favorite um, heroes and villains from literature from this time in my life, you know. So I just got done painting a picture of Dritz Dwarden and Lord Soth and Elric, you know, it's all these characters from these books I read. And with Elric, man, with Elric, like, everyone's like, oh, Elric, Elric. I had a hard time getting into those stories. Uh, but I loved the Blue Oyster Cult songs about him, you know, uh, Black Blade and Veteran of the Psychic Wars. You know, so he's, uh, he had an influence on me because of that. Uh, the Wendy Penny book, um, is it Storm Shadow that, that documents her project of doing a short film about Elric and, and uh, Stormbringer, his sword. Storm Shadow, I think that's the name of it, and I'm not sure. Um, the other stuff I was really into in this time of my life is I, <laughs> there's Iron Man, is uh, the Thieves World books. And I just, man, I loved them. I even did a Thieves World campaign 
in D&D that I ran. But I think Steve and Chill were the only other two people that were really into the series. So uh, they, they got all the inside jokes and stuff, but nobody else did. But it was still a fun game. I even collected that graphic novel, um, Thieves World novel. And they would come out, man, they come out like every six months or something. It was just a horrible release. Three months, something like that. Just a horrible release date, but it was so worth it. It was, uh, Tim Sales did the, the artwork for them, and they were like these just gorgeous black and white brush illustrations. And every time I see that, it's funny, you know, they say like, like, uh, scent is the, the sense that drags you back into the past, but with me, it's visual. Because every time I see things like, like the, my old Thieves World graphic novel, I'm immediately catapulted back into sitting in my living room or my kitchen table with my friends, you know, rolling, rolling dice and fighting off cobalts or whatever happened to be going on in that particular adventure. And I, you know, I do miss that, that stuff, even though it was, in a way, a massive time killer, but while we were doing that, we weren't doing anything bad, we weren't robbing stores, smoking crank, or, you know, drinking and driving around, in fact, we really didn't even drink when we gamed, at all, um, it just, that wasn't my thing, my parents drank a lot, so I really had no interest in uh, doing that as, as a kid, or as a teenager. We do, man, I didn't, we'd go to cons, right? And uh, the first con I went to was one called uh, Viking Con, and I was 14. My parents let me go, and it was like four or five days up at this college uh, up north where I live in uh, Bellingham. And, you know, my friends, they brought they older friends, much older, like in their 20s. And uh, they brought all the booze and all the weed partying pretty hard when we were at this convention. And we rented, um, we rented dorm, uh, like dorm rooms because it was during a break, so no one was living in the dorms. And they had an incense burner that you just, one of the guys there can't, we just keep putting weed on top of it. So just being in the room, you could get a contact high. So I didn't really hang out there very much. Um, but man, it was a blast. I, my costume was stupid. It was uh, Mr. Hyde. But the people I went with had great costumes. Um, Rick was kind of like a zombie-looking... Uh, I don't know, was he like a... He's like a, just like a, like a fine gentleman that was undead. And then I think he's also trying to do a uh, riff rat from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Pike was a... He dressed up as a ninja, which was... I know it sounds kind of goofy, but it was like more like, like a like an anime ninja. He had like a white gi with no sleeves and he had this cool symbol painted on his face and he had these wooden uh, bow consorts, which I still have I still have one of them. I ended up at my house for some reason when he went off to college. And uh, it was pretty badass. And then Jill and Kent had their leather top hats and were just dressed like, I don't know, aristocratic vampires or some such thing. I don't think Todd dressed up as anything. And Kim, who also went, dressed up like a little hottie. And this is before uh, I had a girlfriend. And so, you know, 14-year-old hormones, this drunk girl, ended up hanging out with us in our room. And me and Pike were giving her foot rubs. And it was like <laughs> it was like this pathetic attempt to get laid in competition with each other. Um, and of course, you know, neither one of us did, or at least I didn't with her. I don't, I don't think Pike did, I'm not sure. But it was it was pretty funny. Now I think about it. And then the last day of that convention, uh, Jill made hash brown, like chopped up O'Brien hash browns with peppers in them from this frozen bag because it had a full kitchen. And it was great. I didn't go to sleep that whole night, so I was just 
Oh, I felt like such ass from, you know, not, not getting any sleep. The drunk girl uh, kicked her out so we could pack up and get our shit together and leave. That was a great, great convention. A lot of firsts for me. I saw The Thing for the first time. Never saw that. It was scary as hell. Um, I walked into a couple having sex at a con in the back of the movie room. First time for everything. Uh, it wasn't the last time that I had stumbled across that at a science, a sci-fi convention, but that was the first. Uh, so my first Society for Creative Anachronism sword fight, which was a blast. And the dealer's room, which was, uh, just crazy. Uh, people selling swords and bootleg heavy metal uh, VHSs, clothes and buttons. Buttons were a huge thing. They had guys, like, ten of them making buttons. You know, like, I gork Spock, or my hair is blonde, my eyes are green, but my heart is black. And uh, they were selling a ton of them. Oh, and that... It's kind of funny I got hooked on this convention. The other thing on that convention is I met one of the most interesting human beings on planet Earth there, and that's uh, Damien Willick. He's a comic book artist, professional horse breaker, and he was, he's like a force of nature, this guy. Um, and he was like the uh, auctioneer at the dance. They had like a a slave auction that if you were captured they would sell you off and you'd have to go dance with whoever bought you for one dance. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Larry Niven was there trying to hit on all the plus size ladies. Uh, he's an author. He wrote like the... Oh, I hope I'm right on this. Yeah, he wrote the Man Kazin Wars. Uh, lots of stuff. And you'd, you'd hear people talk about him at other conventions like, oh, is the drunk here? And it was so fun. I mean, he'd just get hammered. And then he would dance like a washing machine. That's exactly what it looked like. It was like this little agitation cycle. <laughs> and he'd be dancing with like three or four very large ladies. And you'd just see the look on his face like, yep, I'm going to take him home. Yeah, Larry's getting lucky tonight. Uh, Donna Barr was at that. Uh, she does a comic book called The Desert Peach about uh, Rommel's brother. Uh, you know, it's kind of fun. I know Jill collected that for a while. And uh, one of my favorite cartoonists that you'd meet at these conventions, uh, Phil Foglio. Um, him and his wife, Kaja, now they do uh, Girl Genius. It's like a steampunk comic. But back then, he was drawing out uh, Myth Adventures and... Um, Buck, Godot, Zapgun for Hire, and then he did also, uh, back in the day, he was doing a porn comic called Xenophile, which was super funny. I got like, I don't know, five of them, six of them, however many he put out, and uh, I'd always get him, <laughs> I'd always get him signed, and he'd be like, to Jade, have fun, but not too much fun, or why are you reading this stuff, you pervert, you know, things like that. Phil was a character, and he started recognizing us, me and Jill, you know, maybe not by name, but by face at all the conventions we'd go to. And I'd always end up getting his stuff. Which was a lot of fun. I like Phil. And the work that him and Kaja are doing right now, his wife, is just uh, awesome. Well, anyways, I'm kind of running out of stuff to say about reminiscing, which... I guess it's a good thing. So, peace.